We lost the best candle fragrance vendor known to man. They took away our very being willing to exist because they snatched the beautiful fragrances. I never used them, but I know y'all did. I heard about them every day. 16, 17. Do you use 1617? What are your favorite fragrances from 1617? My answer is no. I never even tried them. In 2020, I saw their prices were too high and I said no, goodbye. That must have been the sentiment of lots of people because they had to shut down, down, down. Bad news is you don't gain access to those expensive fragrances or the overhead of shipping and delivery. Good news is you get the opportunity to have those high-end fragrances at a more cost-effective price using Hyven Honey. The Discovery Kit comes with 24 two ounce fragrance oils, guys. That's almost full size. If you think about it, two ounces gives you a great accurate depiction of testing, wax melt testing, candle testing, all with one sample versus if you got samples somewhere else, you may not have that flexibility. So I definitely recommend checking out this kit. And if you use my code Boss Vision, you get money off there. So it's a win-win. Yes, guys. So Hive and Honey actually came out with the 1617 fragrance library. And today I'll be sharing with you part two of our series on the fragrances. I'm a very honest individual. I want to tell you if these fragrances smell bad and it's not going to be personal to 1617. Odds are they're going to smell amazing because of the cost. Last video, we went through all of these here, this top eight, right? To be honest, Forgotten Sweater was my favorite. And you could watch that video in the description of this one today we're going to go through another eight okay and i'm going to give you my honest opinion of each scent luckily with hive and honey unlike any brand she puts the scent notes on the bottle so initially i will not look at the scent notes until i give you my review and then let you know what the scent notes actually are so you can compare definitely stay tuned for this video if you like fragrance hauls comment down below if you like 16 17 let me know i want to pick your brain about that and yeah let's just jump right in all right we can move these our time has gone tell me where are my blue skies Guys are always like this black urge to continue a sentence with a song. It's like I couldn't hold it in. It was outer body experience. <laughs> Here's our next eight. Very excited to see what they smell like. Honestly, the, the fact that 1617 uh, discontinued these fragrances was like a blessing in disguise because then we get access to larger sizes. These are two ounce samples and y'all know in the industry, the standard is one ounce and then you don't have to deal with the pricing because this two ounce probably cost what their one ounce did with Hive Honey because Hive Honey actually is a candle vendor made by a candle maker. That's what you want. You don't want to go to a vendor who does is disconnected. Kyle and Honey's connected, okay? So let's just start with You Wish. Uh, back to this, in part one, which you can watch in the description of this video, I discussed how fascinated I was with 1617. I can't find this on Google or anything, but for some reason, the names of their fragrances were like the names of candles, the names of like really, in UK they call it cheek, really cheeky, cheeky names, uh, or like really, suggestive name that one of them was called spicy situation like you about to get freaky they do some things you know <laughs> it's interesting but this is called you wish i'm holding it in a way so that i won't see the scent notes so let's just go ahead and see all right so just smelling it from the just smelling it from inside it smells like a very strong perfume that's what the owner of hive honey mentioned to me as well she's like these are going to smell like perfume she did not lie but let's see, the notes are. I have these blotter strips are just wafting in the area. So we can get an accurate depiction of what's going on here. Okay. Okay, I'm getting a very strong jasmine. It's almost like a warm jasmine. Like a warm jasmine, maybe gardenia vanilla. I'm not exactly sure, but I definitely love this scent. It would be perfect for a floral, especially with the spring coming up. It's March right now when I'm filming this, um, but wow. It's subtle yet very distinctive that I would know. This would be a very popular scent in a candle. I wouldn't put it in a tart. I wouldn't put it in a room spray. It's more of a candle. It seems like they almost put essential oils in here as well. I'm a huge fan. All right, the notes, let's see. The notes are Arabian Jasmine, okay. Galbanum, labdanum, and vanilla. Okay, well, 
That sounds very fancy, but overall all I smell is like jasmine vanilla. And I'm, I knew it was like a warm jasmine, which means like a sweet, a sweet under note, undertones of jasmine, which work really well together. Honestly, in terms of fragrance blending, you can watch the video here if you're confused about how to do that. But yeah, it's important to balance out a very strong scent with a warm scent like vanilla. Don't just do a vanilla by itself. You're not going to get a strong hot throw. But if you put a distinctive scent like jasmine together, it's a happy balance. I would give this a 10 out of 10. You wish. You wish you were a 10 out of 10 like this you wish fragrance. Next we have Lombard Street. Lombard Street seems like New York or something. What the heck? Why do they call it that? Let's just see. I'm going to just blot and waft. Blot and waft. I did a little bit too much blotting this time, but it's fine. Okay, it's like an orange. I'm getting like a, a warm citrus. So maybe a citrus plus a floral. I like it. Okay. It's giving like citronella, maybe even a tropical punch. Okay. Interesting. The notes are, oh, that's why. So it's Damascena Rose. It's not a really strong rose, but the black currant, I, I believe, does have like a, a cherry in it and musk. So not citrus, but oh, it's almost like a baby powder musk. So a strong scented baby powder. I would give this another 10 out of 10. Lombard Street would be something if you wanted to do a fine fragrance, like a luxury perfume, or if you wanted to do something like that was... Uh, a room spray. I would definitely recommend this for that. Next, we're moving on to Blameless Sailor. <laughs> so, like, were they on, like, Pirates of the Caribbean or something? Like, what the heck, 1617? First of all, why were they even called 1617? Like, what does that even mean? I need to know things, but I guess it's too late to even for it to even matter. Um, but yeah, it's good that these scents are at Hive and Honey, though. You could save the price. But blame the sailor. Let's see. Oh, my God. It's so, mmm. It gives you a happy mood. I think it also has rose in it, but then, like, a little bit of, like, an apple. I'm getting, like, a melon. Not even apple. Melon. A melony perfume scent. And then it's kind of strong. Okay, so the notes are fresh peach, citrus blossom, sweet basil, clove, and nutmeg. I can smell the nutmeg now. But in terms of that, it's more like a melony scent. I guess the peach plus basil makes it more melon. Ooh, it's so good. This is a very great spring scent. I'm excited about this one. Wow, okay, another 10 out of 10. I feel like I don't want to hype them up too much, but yeah, this is hot, hot fire. Next, we have Le Jardin. Yeah, Le Jardin? Could be French, you know, they put J's, Y's, and stuff. Le Jardin. Let's see. Ooh, bougie. Ooh, okay. I'm definitely getting rose, but let's get a blotter strip to get the accurate depiction. Girl, you know what you're doing. It's like a very, almost like a tobacco-y rose scent. It's like, it reminds me of citronella as well. It's very strong, even a cherry. I don't like it, to be honest with you. I wouldn't use it. It seems like something that you would smell, like on your older, like your grandma. But, oh, that's strong. But I don't want to say anything to her because she'll get mad and offended. Okay, the notes are tea rose. Okay, sweet grass, cherry blossom. I guess that's where the cherry basil black tea yeah like Japanese cherry blossom you know from Bath and Body Works it's like a it's an acquired taste if you like Japanese cherry blossom you would probably appreciate this but then again it's really strong with that like basil and sweet grass I wonder if this is for someone who has candles that have like you know flowers in them you want to do more of an earthy line this would be better for you I'd give it a 7 out of 10 for my personal taste Next, we have Better Off Without Him. Okay, period. Because <laughs> I also saw an article on something like this. Like, men think that we need them. And in reality, they are supplemented by us. 
So, you know, when you go to the gym and you use like a pre-workout to get energy, we are a man's pre-workout, okay, period. So if you don't use me, then I'm full and I am not at depletion. So you need me, we don't need you. Okay, period, if, if you don't touch a, a supplement, it's gonna, you know, it gets better. It's gonna sit there and not, it's not gonna be bothered. It's safe, it's unafflicted. Better without them, period. But uh, <laughs> that was too far, I was a little feminist. I meant it though. I have a whole blog on my awareness of what women's challenges are just based upon being in the gym so regular. I go to the gym six times a week so I get so much intel into how men view us as like, we're like cartoon characters to them. Like we're not even humans to them. They're like, okay, there's that one. There's that prototype of like, you know, the big butt, little boobs. Oh, that's the big butt. Uh, no big boobs girl. Oh, that's the sh that that's the sponge shaped girl like they just view our our physical features as Associating with our identity. That's your only identity to a man So it's very hard for them to like Feel emotion towards you because you're just like a you're that's like me saying I Really love this blotter strip. It's just a blotter strip. It just is that it's it's rectangular. Okay, we're going too far But let's go <laughs> better off without him. Let's see what it smells like <laughs> Check out the blog if you want to hear more about my my take on this Oh, this is very citrus. Oh my god, and it's like a tea. I'm getting like green tea, too Like a green. Oh, it's good. It smells like green tea But like a uh, orange green tea I like it. Okay, so it's a lemon blossom. That's why lemon blossom, yuzu, mint, and amaris. I'll put what those mean on the screen. Oh, so it's not citrus. It's li well, lemon is a citrus, but lemon blossom. Maybe yuzu and mint create this green tea element, but I do remember when I was in severe trauma. Severe trauma to me is working in an office set five days a week from... I think I worked from 9 to 6 p.m. as a secretary for like three years, which was uh, crazy. But the only saving grace that I had was going to the kitchen and getting my free green tea every morning. And they had the green tea from Twining's Tea in the jasmine flavor. This reminds me of that. Uh, it was so good and I lost so much weight because it was such a fat burner. But yeah, 10 out of 10 recommend better off with that. Because <laughs> like it is, you lose weight. Better off without them. They didn't even know that play on words, but it works. Okay, period, 1617. Next, we have Mayfield. Okay, Mayfield, why does that sound like slavery? What is this? <laughs> Let's see. Uh, I used to live in Virginia, and there was a lot of things that, like Plantation Street, like stuff like that. I'm like, what do you mean Plantation Street? Say it with your chest. What are you trying to say? <laughs> okay, I don't like it. Ugh, you know that it's hard to explain like when you walk up to a person and they just ate some food and you can smell the food on them it smells like that ew i don't like it oh gross okay what is this it's english lavender mayor lemon tahitian vanilla so this is a problem for me i never go with vanilla lemon think about it think about it in terms of cooking, would you want to would you want to bake a cake that tastes like vanilla and lemon? That sounds disgusting. Maybe just a lemon cake, but you don't want a sweet lemon. Like, ugh, it's like those lemon heads back in the day, but as a candle. Like, that's not a vibe. Maybe you could eat them. That's like candy, but it's not like to cook. You know, it's like some candy, but not to cook. Same for, like, for me personally, I feel like fragrances, you want them to smell like what you would cook or what you would put in your home for a fine scent. You don't want them to smell like um, candy because that's not like something you cook or put in your home. Okay, yeah, not a fan. Five out of ten. Next, we have Ego Maniacal green what what <laughs> like 16 17 what made them say that you know okay i can't smell anything from the cap some something like excited i want to smell the cap but don't do that mm. 
it's giving that scent that I don't like to use. It's like a Robitussin scent. I forgot what it's called. It's not citronella. It's another one that we stay away from in the candle community. Let's see. Patchouli. <laughs> it doesn't say that, but it just reminded me of that. So this is Calmus, which Calamus, which I'll put on the screen. Ozone Petrichor. Battery died, but that's not stopping anything over here, okay? Back to it. Ego maniacal green, like whose idea was that? And I love it. It does smell like green, like grass. Very floral. I'm getting a lot of things here. It's giving me a lot of emotions. <laughs> I enjoy it. I think it's a 10 out of 10. Um, like, I'm definitely getting bergamot and green. So let's see what they call it. Okay, so it's calamus, ozone, and petrichor. So in terms of that, I, I get that. Uh, Calamus is a, a green and ozone of course has that green scent. Egomaniacal maybe is because of the patricor. I don't know. It's very floral, very strong. This is something you would blend with something. I would blend this with a very strong floral because it's just getting too much grass for me and I wanted to give like or even a masculine like a musk, a warm amber musk with this. Oh my god. Or amber noir from Candle Sands. Oh that would be so good. Yeah. So I give it like an eight. Mm, it has to be blended with something. Okay, last, but certainly not least, that's so Shane. What? Again, it's always a, what? <laughs> oh, okay, so let's see. Ugh. Oh hell no. Ugh. This is bad, you guys. No, no, no. Don't get this one. You can get all those. Don't get this one. So, I don't even know what I'm getting. It's just not so good. But the notes say leather, tuberose, and agarid. Now, why would I put leather with a floral? That's not a vibe. Leather, maybe vanilla. Leather, maybe musk. But not a floral. Leather, floral. Think about that. Do you really want to go in your car and it smells like leather and you just put some flowers in there? It's kind of awkward. I don't like it. Ugh, ugh, ugh. One out of ten. Okay, I hate to end the video that way, but I would say everything else is great. Don't play with that. Don't get that. That's so shame. That's so not so not so good smells. Um, but yeah, I hope this video was insightful on 1617 cents. Honestly, the reason why 1617 was so popular is because of the unique fragrances and names. So I would definitely recommend checking out Hive Honey's 1617 library, but don't just stop there. There's so many other things you can get on Hive and Honey's website from wax to supplies in terms of wicks. They are like one of the few people I know that have CDN wicks. Definitely recommend those. And if you use my code BOSSVISION, you will get some money off. So I hope you all enjoy the rest of your day, your week, your next hours, living your purpose and love life. Okay, bye.